few years ago during one of the darkest times of my life, uh, waking up and leaving the religion of my youth, um, I heard a song that I connected with by an artist and a musician that also left the same religion that I was in. Uh, his name is Cliff, but he goes by the name Fifth. And the song was, I Wanna Live. And that song hit me right in the heart. My brand is about living a life that is authentic to yourself. It is about bucking conventions, just not automatically going along with everything that you've been told. When they, you know, hear my music or see me, I think that's what I represent for people. About the bay, that's the birthplace. A laptop in the mic, that's my workplace. It got him thinking. I put him in that same lane of guys that make you think the Simbas, the J. Coles, uh, the Big Shans. It's almost like a music therapy. I'm a big fan of rap music, but there's a lot that I can't directly identify with. My background doesn't fit anything I'm listening to. His lane is very unique. He also has a story that hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people can relate to. You know what that feel like? With the rap, it wasn't anything I ever even imagined taking seriously because, mainly because I was a Jehovah's Witness. Cold sweats, dreaming about the past, guess I still ain't let it go yet. Grinding every day cause I ain't reach all of my goals yet. Destination greatness, I could feel it in my soul, yep. Brother turning 30, ain't seen him in hella long. My sister's stalking my gram, so I know she heard the songs. Gotta I mean, you're not even really supposed to be pursuing fame or celebrity, let alone in a genre that is directly frowned upon by the leaders, you know? Um, like in, the, in their literature, they talk about it, how it's, you know, it's not, it represents the spirit of Satan's world everything that goes along with this genre, you know. Except my past, knowing it caused some major damage. Cause you ain't never gonna be flying till you claim your baggage. Damn. First time I heard fifth rap was seventh grade. Fifth would always be rapping. That's what I remember about him. In junior high, when we would have a project and we had to present to the class, I would do it in rap form. I remember I was in a health class and we were talking about the dangers of smoking. And I made a whole song about getting lung cancer and stuff like that. <laughs> like, he was clearly smart enough. <laughs> but what I did not know is the Jehovah Witness piece. There's level of sin within the Jehovah's Witness organization, and that's not, you're not gonna get excommunicated for listening to rap, but you are guilt tripped about it. I felt like I was doing something wrong, and I felt like God was watching me saying, I kind of hate you for doing that right now. <laughs> Once I got to a certain point and I was trying to excel in that ecosystem, in order for me to have what they call a clean conscience, meaning you're not doing something that conflicts with this belief system, I stopped listening to rap. When I became a baptized uh, Jehovah's Witness, I was attending uh, this particular Kingdom Hall that's right behind me. When you're baptized as a Jehovah's Witness, it means you're, you're an, you become an official member of that organization and you're now subject to um, their rules in a way that you wouldn't have been subject to before. My first music video, I used the metaphor of a contract for baptism because really, when it comes to the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's really what it, what it is. You're signing a contract and any breach of that contract results in you know, loss of family and loss of everybody you've ever known and all those types of things. I was a Jehovah's Witness until, until the age of 28. My father still ain't met my son and they got the same name, that's your way a ton. My little boy and my mom share a birth date. I wouldn't wish this on nobody, it's the worst yeah, fate. Really sorry, mommy. Un abrazo allá. Dame un abrazo regular. ¿Me puedes dar un abrazo? Sí. Okay, dame un abrazo. Y vamos a llevar a Tony a agarrar también una ice cream. 
Oh, también. I didn't really know about uh, Jehovah Witnesses, um, and I met Cliff actually when he was leaving the religion, and it was very sad to see him being alone without, you know, friends or family members. And I think that music brought him healing, and with his passion, he's been able to express himself and really evolve, and he's doing that for other people. After I left the Jehovah's Witnesses, that was part of my therapy, is kind of going to writing songs. He came out with the cost of doing business and he, he shared it with me. And I was blown away. I was like, this is literally the anthem for anybody who's left the Jehovah's Witness organization or who will be leaving in the future. Like, this song will hey, yo, <laughs> get you through it. Like a bad dream, could have swore I woke up. I married my religion, now I'm pretty sure we broke up. Now my family toe up, hostage like a hold up. I'm thinking, damn, when that common sense supposed to show up? I decided to grow up, stop believing fairy tales. I was on the slave boat, now that ship is really sailed. Daddy told me very well, now my life will live in hell. I left the W's, they figure out and took a hell. I, I had a bit of a following because because when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses, I created a YouTube page, right? And for whatever reason, it, it exploded, it just blew up. You know, I put out my first video, wasn't even trying to be a, a YouTuber, really. I just wanted to share my story. I wanted to get it off my chest about the Jehovah's Witness experience. And before I knew it, a thousand views, 10,000 views, you know, all these views. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So then I realized like people, for, for whatever reason, people want to hear from me. You know, people like the way I present myself or my story or whatever. And so I continue with that. So I built that up and that got to maybe like 18,000 subscribers or something like that, you know, respectable number. And then from there, I just out of the blue announced, I'm gonna start rapping. And I think everybody was like, what? Like, you know, I think people were kind of just thrown off or just, it was unexpected. But when I put out my first song, they were like, Oh, like you're actually good. I have questions I can't answer, the answers I can't question. Steady making confession, the man for God's blessing, thinking he turned. One of the first songs I've heard is The Cost of Doing Business. And I must say, even today, when I listen to that song, I tear up because I'm somebody who's been there. You know, um, I've been in those dark places. It speaks volumes for us. That line, I'd rather have questions without answers versus answers I can't question. That spoke home to me and I know to so many other people that grew up like we did and possibly other people as well. That song really helped give me light at the end of the tunnel. You could tell he lived it, he felt it. That song that played an integral part of my recovery uh, after leaving the Jehovah's Witness religion. Doing business, I lost everybody I ever knew as a witness. I'm thinking, hey, that's the cost of doing business. Fifth. People now know me as the ex-Jehovah's Witness rapper. I wasn't always comfortable with, with that, but I am now at a place where I'm like, that's what it is, and that's that's who I am. That's my, you know, that's my background, and that's part of what makes me interesting, you know. The biggest challenge is time, because my day job, if you will, really consumes a lot of my time. I can't mail it in in that profession. I work as a Spanish interpreter. I'm a certified Spanish interpreter. I have been a certified Spanish court interpreter since 2011. So it's not really something that I can like just kind of halfway do and then just be working on music at the same time, you know? There's so much pressure and there's so much just on our daily life with having a job and, I, and having a family. So I think that sometimes there isn't a balance, but in my opinion, he has to do it this way and I have to be supportive to make sure that he is able to succeed. When you're juggling having a family, having a career, your time, your resources can only go to so many different places. The goal is to release the music, allow the people to dictate his future, you know, how much longer he's gonna be rapping and telling this story. I think we have to figure out what, what's gonna happen with this album. The idea is get my Shopify set up so that um, I can, it can be ready for a proud to pay like release. In order to release this album, this has been a work in progress for a really long time. You know, trying to just get ready and trying to 
kind of learn as I as I was going um, what is the best way to release it so that the most uh, people can hear it. So going back to the spreadsheet that everybody has seen, right? Full length videos, even music videos, right? Throughout three months or whatever. Here's a 20 second clip of the me, you know, video, and then here's a performance, and then here's, and you just kind of keep doing it like that, you know. There's so much that goes into it, and to be honest, I'm still learning, you know, as I go. Um, but I really have a lot of respect for for independent artists now, as I've really seen, you know, how much of a grind it is as you get ready to roll out a project. There's gonna be a, re a release event, right? And then it's like, are, you, are we trying to throw shows after that? I think a tour could be on the table too. I mean, I think I, I think I could do small. I got people in Portland, for example, that say, hey, if you get up here, we can, we got, we can fill this. Hey, once again, thank y'all for rocking with me. I go by Fifth. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Everything costs money. Studio time, you know, beats, uh, licensing for those beats, videographers, uh, music videos. There's a lot of money out and maybe little to no money coming in. For the most part, that's where I that's where I am with this. So, you know, it, obviously it would take it would take a big turnaround. But I actually do see the trajectory. I feel like that's something that can be attained. You know, but once I once I have that and I'm able to just do music, I think that's when I will consider myself a success in this. It's always the consistency, is dedication, is believing in yourself. And I think now with so many rappers, um, you, you have to stand out in a way to where you're not clowning yourself. And for him, he's a, he's a grown man rapper, right? But reinventing how you quote unquote make it, right? He's making it by influencing people's lives. I think he'll be, he'll be, he'll do a really good job at that. Along the way, man, don't make no mistake. They say I burned some bridges, spitting fire by that golden gate. I'm damn near vegan, but I know the stakes. Know they hella high, but I never been the type to shy away. I got the drive, plus I know I got the right of way. Getting to it right away, and not to You know, based on my background and even age and things like that, it's not definitely not a slam dunk that I'm supposed to be. So it's kind of like, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for this because why not? Like I want to do it. I'm passionate about it, and I'm just gonna do it. And whatever happens, happens. I survived poverty, religion, and being black in America. People we depended on turn their back and embarrassed us. Self-esteem low as fuck. Obstacles will slow me up. Getting older every day. Never really growing up. People talk over my head. I feel like I don't know enough. Shit that I should know by now. Like, fuck, ain't I old enough? God damn, it's a miracle we holding up. With all this weight up on our shoulders, man, they load us up. Enough to make you take your hands and throw them up. Plus, they rub it in like they just showing up to show us up. Man, I could have folded up, disappeared, had him put my photo up, like, have you seen this man? Could have closed shop, boarded up, but through them dark nights, I always knew I see that morning sun. Now I wake up smiling at my child, like, good morning, son. Crying tears of joy, all that morning done. Made it through the storm more than once. Hella storms, more than one. Hella winds, more to come. I can't afford to run. Lost my share of battles, but I ain't stopping till that war is won. One.